Hi everybody and welcome to Heal Heat. My name is George Coles and on this episode we're doing a top 10. Topic of the top 10, top 10 male wrestlers for 2023. We're getting towards the end of the year here, so we're going to start seeing a little bit more of these. This is my opinion of who I think the 10 best male wrestlers of the year are. This is going to go with a lot of kayfabe mixed in with my enjoyment of their matches and where I think and how important I think they are to their specific promotion. With that being said, we're going to jump right in at number 10, Carmelo Hayes. Carmelo to me is a no-brainer, blue chip, megastar talent waiting to happen. Seeing Carmelo Hayes now is the equivalent of seeing a great basketball player when they were in college and noticing their greatness. This is like Kevin Durant in Texas. You get to see what's going to be coming of, an, of a megastar. And I think that's Carmelo Hayes in NXT. To me, he's been the highlight of the year in NXT. He's been the best wrestler of the year in NXT. I love everything he's doing. I love how they're building a feud slowly with him and Trick Williams right now. I think he's going to be an amazing can't miss talent. To me, I think he could possibly be this generation's Shawn Michaels. I think he's that good. I think he's that great of a talent and that great of a prospect. I'll go from that on number nine. A guy whose career spans back to when Shawn Michaels was in his prime, and that's Christian Cage. Christian Cage is doing his best work since his TNA run, in my opinion. The heel stuff he's doing, it's just so good. And yes, I know there's the memes and the tropes of, I see you have a dad and your dad is dead. I know that they keep going back to that well. And has some of it been a little bit hokey? Yes. But I think Christian really, really stepped his game up this year. To me, if I look at Christian and Adam Copeland, a.k.a. Edge, Christian's a guy that's standing out in AEW. He's a guy that's doing the compelling work. He's the one that's making their feud interesting. Everything he's done this year, I think Christian's really stepped it up. The Patriarch gimmick is really awesome in my opinion, hence why he's number nine. I'm going from that on number eight. We just talked about a main eventer from AEW. Now we're going to talk about main event Jay Uso. And yes, I was a terrible transition. I understand. Jay, to me, really broke out this year. And it's very surprising because as great as the Usos are as a tag team, I never seen in my head either one of them having single success. And I think Jay's charisma, Jay's drive, everything about Jay Uso is screaming that he's a star. And he's one of the main guys in the WWE right now. The story with the bloodline, him leaving the bloodline, that's probably been the best story in wrestling over the past couple of years. He's just a phenomenal wrestler. I like that he's getting a chance to shine. I like that we're getting to see what he could do as a solo wrestler instead of part of the team, which is one of the great tag teams of all time. Just a great run. Kind of a little bit unexpected on my end, but I'm glad when I get surprised by someone, and Jey Uso definitely gave me a surprise this year. We're going from Jay our number seven, Tatsuya Naito. Naito's gone on record is saying he's probably retiring very soon, and if he goes out within the next year or so, he's going out with a bang. I think this is one of the better years that he's had in quite a while. I think his motivation has been there. The run through the G1 where he won the G1 to get to main event Wrestle Kingdom coming up. I think he was absolutely awesome there. He's kind of stepped into the foreground as other stalwarts have taken a little bit of a backseat while New Japan is introducing a younger crop of soon-to-be main eventers with guys like Ren Narita, Shota Umino, Yoda Suji, and Yuya Uemura. I think we're seeing the last hurrah of Naito, and I think he's given his absolute best. I would not be shocked if he beats Sonata at Wrestle Kingdom. I think Sonata has had a bit of an underwhelming championship run, and... It would be a great story. The old friends, the old LIJ mates, Naito beating Sonata, I think it'd be the best way for him to have that one last run at the top, get that Wrestle Kingdom main event that he was kind of screwed out of a couple years back, if you remember. It's probably more than a couple years now, where the fans voted to have the Intercontinental title match be the main event instead of his world title match. I think he's awesome. Hence why he's up here on the list. Going from that, our number six. Throw your ones up for the tribal chief. Acknowledge him, Roman Reigns. And look, 
if Roman Reigns was on TV more often, wrestled more often, he'd probably be number one. He's hurt a bit by the fact that he only wrestles maybe six or seven matches a year, ten at the most. However, when he does wrestle, and the story he does tell even outside of his matches, it's top-notch. It's the best story in wrestling. I just mentioned it with Jey Uso. The bloodline has been the most compelling thing. His dominant run has been one of the things that has brought WWE to being really compelling television. And I know that part of the reason he's so special is we don't get to see him as much as some other people. However, I would like to see it ramp up a bit. I do think he's awesome. If he was there, let's say he wrestled once a month, twice a month, he'd probably be number one in my opinion. Going from the ace of WWE, our number five, the ace of New Japan Pro Wrestling, Kazuchika Okada. As great as Naito's year was, Okada's just Okada. At the end of the day, when Okada hangs up his boots, he's probably going to be the most decorated wrestler in the history of New Japan Pro Wrestling. One of the greatest wrestlers of all time. He's slowly creeping up into the top ten. Probably going to finish out as one of the top five wrestlers that have ever done it. And he's just amazing. Everything about him, every match he has is awesome. Everything he does is awesome. I know we're a couple weeks away at this point from him having to make a decision does he stay in New Japan? Does he test the water, go to WWE, AEW? Does he do some sort of hybrid contract where he can wrestle New Japan and AEW? I, I hope he stays with New Japan Pro Wrestling because I don't know that anything he could do in AEW would match up with what he's done there. And with his stacked as the main card in WWE is right now, I think he might get a little bit lost in the shuffle. I mean, he'd be great coming in. I'd love to see matches with him and Roman, him and Cody Rhodes, him and CM Punk would be amazing. Seth Rollins, another great opponent for him. But unless he really wants to scratch that WWE itch, I think he would just be one of the guys instead of in New Japan where he is the guy. And there's not nothing wrong with that. It's not like saying you're the top guy of an indie federation. You're the top guy of one of the biggest companies in the world and one of the biggest companies in wrestling history. So to me, I think he should stay. Just my opinion. Whatever he does, I'm going to watch because I love watching his matches. I'm going from Okada, our number four, a guy that's pushed his way into being considered one of the aces of WWE, Cody Rhodes. Just earlier today, I seen someone compare Cody Rhodes to John Cena in a very favorable way, and I think that comparison is very apt. I think Cody Rhodes has taken that John Cena role. He's the ultra babyface. The crowd loves him. Matter of fact, I think the crowd likes him a little bit more than they did with Cena. They want to see him finish his story. They want to see him succeed. They want to hear. They love it when he asks, what do they want to talk about? They love singing along to his song. I love seeing this because I'm a huge Cody Rhodes fan. I love the fact that he's got such a prominent role and he did this all on his own. He bet on himself and he's made himself one of the top wrestlers in all of wrestling. If he finishes the story this year, he'll probably be number one next year or meaning 2024. I love Cody. I hope to see him finish the story at WrestleMania 40. I think it would be awesome. Now going from Cody, our number three, the architect, Seth freaking Rollins. Seth Rollins has built up that WWE Championship and given it so much prestige. With the matches he's having, with the feuds he's having, he's putting so much into it and making it such a great championship for something that basically was the belt that Roman doesn't have and considered secondary. Seth has made it something special. He's had a fantastic year. I love what he's doing. I love the gimmick. I really hope his match at WrestleMania is going to be him and CM Punk. I think that's going to be amazing. Just a great, great wrestler, a great ambassador for the WWE. He's always been the company guy. What a fantastic year he's had. I'll go from that, our number two. We talked about the ace of New Japan. We talked about aces in WWE. Now let's go to one of the aces in AEW. That's Maxwell Jacob Friedman, a.k.a. MJF. MJF has probably had his best year in wrestling, although I think he's going a little bit towards the hokey side in his promos now, in the ass-kissing babyface role. 
I kind of wish he stayed the same scumbag, but just had the fans cheer for the scumbag, much like when Austin was the hottest babyface in wrestling. He was the same as when he was the heel. MJF has stepped up in matches this year. His matches with guys like Switchblade Jay White have just been amazing. He's carried that championship on his back on a very tumultuous year for the company and proven that he's a guy that you can bank on that he's money, that he could sell tickets, that he could carry your company. I don't know if there's actually going to be a bidding war in 2024, but if there is, he's going to make a ton of money coming out of it. I don't want to say it's a breakout year, but it's definitely his best year in my opinion. The flag bearer for AEW, MJF. Now before I get to my number one, I do a thing here called the best arrest. Basically, it's things that were considered for the list, but didn't quite make it. First up, Will Ospreay. Ospreay, to me, has had an up and down year. He's had great matches, not so great storylines. He's come up a little bit short in some things that he's done. He had the big announcement that he's going to be joining AEW very shortly after, obviously, his run in New Japan, which I think is up in January. He gave us that great moment where he came out and gave the, listen, pipe down, pipe down. I thought it was great. He's one of the best wrestlers in the ring. Again, I do think... Much like I said, where Naito stepped up and some of the other main eventers stepped back a bit for the younger guys, I think Osprey is one of the guys that took a step back. And not in quality-wise, just in how they presented him on the show. They probably knew he was going, so yeah, that's, that's why he did. He was considered, but didn't quite make the list. Now last but not least on the best of the rest, Swerve Strickland. I fully expect 2024 to be the year of Swerve. If he goes through 2024 without winning the AEW Championship, AEW has made a grave mistake. He has skyrocketed. His value has gone up and up and up, and he's always been great. He's always been someone I've really enjoyed. But with his promos, the stuff he did with Hangman, he's really elevated himself into the upper echelon. I hope he wins the Continental Classic. I think that's what they're calling their G1-esque tournament. I think it would be a great start to a great year and have him build on that to win the championship. If it was up to me, he'd be the guy that would beat MJF for it. I think 2024 is going to be the year of Swerve. I think 2023 was a great year. Just barely missed our list. Now, before I get to my number one, if you think I put someone too high, someone too low, left somebody off the list altogether, let me know down here in the comments. While you're there, smash that like button, share the video, subscribe if you haven't. That being said, our number one male wrestler for the year 2023, Gunther. Everything that Reigns has done for the year, everything that MJF has done, Gunther has done in spades. He's there almost weekly. He's cutting great promos. He's having fantastic matches. He's setting records with the Intercontinental Championship and breaking 30-year-old records to be the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion of all time. And I know he's catching up with the longest total days of being Intercontinental Champion. I think he's going to pass that somewhere early in 2024. Just a dominant wrestler, whether it be against The Miz, whether it be his record length in the Royal Rumble, his matches with Sheamus, Drew McIntyre. He's just looked great all year. I think Gunther has really cemented himself as someone to be considered one of the best wrestlers in the world. He's absolutely amazing. That's why he's my number one. Now, if you made it all the way to the end here, let me know in the comments who your top wrestler on the male side of the coin is for the year. Let me know who you have. With all that being said, my name is George Coles, and this has been another Heel Heat Top 10.